We now have proposals from the presumptive Republican nominee for President of the United States to bar all Muslims from emigrating to America. We hear language that singles out immigrants and suggests entire religious communities are complicit in violence. Where does this stop? U.S. President Barack Obama attacked Donald Trump's immigration policies today. The president called Trump's proposed ban on Muslims entering the country dangerous and said it betrays the values America stands for. Obama didn't even mention Trump by name, but dismissed, quote, yapping from what he called politicians who tweet. He said painting on Muslims with a broad brush would mean doing the terrorist work for them. So as the war of words becomes more heated, could the presidential election race hinge on this issue of Muslim immigration. Are Muslims concerned about the rhetoric around this debate? Joining me now from Washington is Sef Inam. He's a policy analyst at the Muslim P Public Affairs Council and Sama Ahmed. She's the president and founder of the Republican Muslim Coalition. Good to see you both. Appreciate you being here. Sef, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you. Uh, so the president called Donald Trump's ban on Muslim in immigration dangerous. What, what do you make of that language um, and, and the way he's qualified that? Well, I think the president put it very... Sorry, Seth, Seth, Seth first, yeah, and then yeah. Saba, yep. Yeah, I think the president put it very powerfully and succinctly. That kind of uh, pro policy proposal is dangerous because uh, it not only uh, goes against our constitutional and American values um, by stigmatizing uh, American Muslims, it also, uh, you know, hurts uh, our allies abroad, you know, by saying that people from your country, because of their faith, are not welcome here furthering the, um, the narrative that ISIS uh, seeks to create of the clash of civilizations. So I think the president was very uh, on point today with his remarks. Okay, Saba, your, your turn. You're a Republican. You support Trump. Uh, how can you reconcile that with being a Muslim in America? I think Donald Trump needs to be educated on Islam and uh, Muslim and we are in the best positions to influence his policies. If we don't engage with the Republicans, they will definitely enact policies that will hurt a lot of people. And we are th therefore reaching out and doing our best to change their views. I mean, re reaching out is one thing, but, but if, uh, if uh, Mr. Trump suggests that Muslims shouldn't be allowed into the United States and that he wants screening that would prevent uh, more Muslims from coming in, uh, how, do you, how could you possibly educate him from that perspective? I think everyone who's coming into the United States needs to be screened. Uh, it shouldn't just be the Muslims. Uh, his ban wouldn't have prevented the attack that happened in Orlando or San Bernardino because most of the peop most of them were born and raised here in the U.S. So targeting an entire religion for the acts of few criminals is not the answer. Uh, yeah, I, I, that, that would be my point as well. So then why, why would you support him given that that's what he's doing? Well, we're supporting the Republican nominee because we think that Republicans are much more stronger on national security, and we hope to have them change their views on Islam and Muslims. Okay, so, Seth, let me go back to you. What, how important do you think this issue of, uh, you know, Muslim identity in the United States or Muslim immigration could be to the election campaign? I mean, well, you see, uh, according to polls, uh, the, uh, Donald Trump is doing well in terms of uh, people that think Islam or American Muslims are the problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, it seems that this election cycle, like many times, uh, Muslims are the political punching bag that uh, scores quick pol political points. So um, right now, um, it's in the media, the conversation's being had, with, um, but unfortunately, the, the dominant voice is coming from, uh, you know, a bigoted, uh, bigoted uh, individual who is um, basically going against, you know, becoming, potentially becoming the leader of a country that prides itself on diversity and pluralism. So, so how do Muslim Americans, I mean, and this is a, obviously a wild generalization, but how, how are people feeling uh, about the things he's saying and what it could uh, provoke within the population then? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, absolutely. Like most people, or a lot of people, I think that uh, we're shocked. American Muslims are shocked at what uh, Donald Trump is saying, and more so shocked that he's actually getting support, because this kind of talk would usually disqualify a candidate. Um, but uh, the good
good thing, the silver lining to this is that uh, due to his remarks, you see a, a rapid mobilize, voter mobilization mm. of the American Muslim community. People are getting registered to vote, first time voters. Mm. So um, that is the silver lining to. Uh, what you're seeing today. That's interesting. I, Obama also, one of the other things he did in, in really it was a tirade in some ways against Trump and these uh, anti-Muslim comments. He pushed back against uh, the criticism that Trump and even other Republicans made against Obama for not using the language radical Islam. And he said calling a threat by another name doesn't make the threat go away. I want to play that clip for people and then get you to weigh in. So there's no magic to the phrase radical Islam. It's a political talking point. It's not a strategy. And the reason I am careful about how I describe this threat has nothing to do with political correctness and everything to do with actually defeating extremism. What do you make of that, Seth, that, that using that term, radical Islam, uh, it doesn't really make the difference here? It, it, what makes the difference is having a plan how to, uh, how to deal with it. Absolutely. What well, you see uh, with people that want the president to use the word radical Islam, they have nothing else to, uh, you know, uh, offer. So they just nitpick on words. Now, words are important. Um, and that's why uh, the term radical Islam, unfortunately, uh, I mean, it's uh, if it were to be used, it would be problematic because, firstly, um, it would uh, it appears to be uh, talking about the uh, entire religion, even if that's not the intent. So therefore, you marginalize a whole 1.6 billion people, including American Muslims here. Secondly, uh, it's problematic because it legitimizes ISIS's narrative. They want to, uh, again, create that clash of civilizations. And they mm -hmm. want to say, hey, America doesn't like Muslims. So uh, when they create that narrative, you have uh, vulnerable people that buy into it. And so, you know, we you know, basically, Donald Trump is doing ISIS's P PR work for them by um, wanting, like, you know, wanting people to say the terms radical Islam. So, Saba, I'll bring you back in. What do you make of that? That that, and that's something that President Obama suggested as well. That Donald Trump is playing the game that uh, terrorists want him to play, particularly when he uses language like radical Islam, which is something that the, the president uh, has backed away from as a term. Right. I think, you know, we need to move beyond the terms that we're using, uh, radical Islam, radical Islamism, ex extremism, violence. I think everybody's talking about extremism. And here we know that this person was inspired by ISIS propaganda. So it had to do with uh, the ISIS uh, Islamic twisted, perverted teachings. So we can't ignore the fact that they are talking about Islam. And, uh, you know, Regardless of what we call this, this is obviously a horrible tragedy, and we're all standing in solidarity with the people of Orlando. But at the same time, we must come together and address the policies behind what enabled this to happen. We don't want other youth getting uh, more ISIS propaganda influence. We hope that you know people that were around him, if they knew about it, they should have come forward, and they should be held accountable if they were the they purposely ignored the, all the signs. But, but if you're a Republican, uh, then how can you not condemn the language that Donald Trump uses about your faith? I strongly condemn his unconstitutional Muslim ban. I don't think there are many federal laws that ban religious discrimination. He can't single out a single faith. Uh, what he's talking about, even in an emergency national security ex exceptions, he does not have that ability to just blanketly ban Muslims because we have many Muslim businessmen, uh, H-1B visas, engineers, doctors, uh, all kinds of people coming from all over the world who are happen to be Muslim. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be more careful about the security situation and the countries he's concerned about, I think those are more important and we definitely need to look into that. Okay, I'll leave it there. Good to get both of your voices on today. Appreciate you making the time for Canada. Seth thank Nam you. and Saba Ahmed, thank you very much. Thank you.